On this edition of Tech Trends, we look at a number of startups showcasing at e Nigeria 2016. Our mobile app of the week is Ax and Expert. And finally, we have a cool gift for you on the giveaway segment. This is Tech Trends, and I'm Chukwemeka Agbata. The trending challenge and effect of rural urban migration has continued to generate great debate for the last three decades causing increase in urban unemployment as a result of phenomenal growth in urbanization, which is why the Technology Development for Poverty Alleviation Initiative Hub is focused on increasing the socioeconomic welfare of rural communities by creating opportunities of gainful employment through empowerment of youths from vulnerable backgrounds by making technological education accessible and developing life skills through innovation, incubation of startups, and sustained programs such as ICT, creative arts, sports, and mentoring. City Papa is actually an NGO, meaning we're not, uh, we not there for the profit. It's a hub here in Abuja, in Kuje. Um, it's an upstream ICT hub. Um, what that means is we produce hardware, then we also write the software to work on that hardware, that's the firmware. City Papa has several sponsors. This is venture, cap and venture capitalists um, that invest in the company. Um, we also have um, some of our products that are targeted for the market. So when we are done, um, um, whoever is interested comes and buys some of these products. Items on display are RFID reader, Ruatronic, TTL USB converter, and printed circuit boards, all made in Nigeria. Most of the items here are geared towards smart city initiatives. If you look on the PCBs, we have some PCBs here. The PCBs have made in Nigeria on them. So all of this was made here in Nigeria. The software for these things were also designed in Nigeria, the firmware. So this is an RFID device. RFID is radio frequency identification. This is like a digital ID card. It can carry your information from your picture to your biometric scan to a few details about, um, about you. The good thing about this device is it's encrypted. So we encrypt it and only few people have access to write or read to this device. So, and all of this is made in Nigeria. The most important thing about these devices are their local content, meaning most of these things are usually not made in Nigeria, but now we're making all of this in Nigeria from the design stage to the implementation stage. The non-profit technology hub organizes system boot camp to teach youths on Internet of Things and embedded systems. A Transformers fan has turned scrap metal into colorful homemade transformers in the city of the Yang in southwest China's Tiwan province. Hu Jianggong, a self-confessed fan of the Transformers TV series and movies, recently displayed four of his creations on a city street. After watching the animated TV series in the 1980s, he started collecting all kinds of transformers. All my inspiration comes from the Transformers movies and I wanted to work out where all accessory parts were put on those Transformers. Although he only graduated from junior high school, Huo taught himself how to use the computer-aided drafting, CNC plasma cutting and other advanced technology to make his own Transformers. The latest type of products can move their hands and heads give out light and make sounds. They are upgraded products. In less than a year, he has made 15 transformers from various species of scrap metal, for example, parts from old cars and motorcycles, including wheel hubs, brake discs, damping discs, engines, gasoline tanks and automotive steel. The world's biggest video game fair in Cologne, the Gamescom, opened its doors to the public, with organizers expecting more than a million visitors and heightened security measures added to the wait. But the gamers patiently waited for their turn to walk into the sacred halls. Day tickets for private visitors were already sold out in July. Under the motto, 
Heroes in New Dimensions. This year's Gamescom puts the focus on virtual reality. Sony introduces a new headset, the PlayStation VR, which will enhance the gaming performance. This is the entry point for us into virtual reality, opposed to the conventional plane. It is a more intense experience for the consumer. They virtually seal themselves off from reality and dive into a new world, move around in this new world, experience emotions in this new world. It is all together a very intense gaming experience. We've also been using the VR glasses for the industry, for instance, the car industry, medicine, and education. There are so many opportunities. Finally, the limits are more in what we can imagine and what we can actually do. With every new idea, we have a new area of usage. According to the Vice President of Prodot of Oculus, Nate Michelle, virtual reality has not only a place in gaming, but also for education, simulation, training, and for watching 360 movies and films. We're building experiences like Oculus Medium, where you can actually sculpt and create um, inside virtual reality uh, using the Oculus Touch controllers. So, you know, we're seeing all sorts of uses well beyond just entertainment to uh, things like education, simulation, training, um, a lot of 360 movies and films. So, again, it goes well beyond just games. Um, but gaming's uh, gaming is definitely central to who we are as a company, and it's a, a big part of where VR is today. More than 850 exhibitors from some 53 countries present their latest games and gaming consoles to the public during the current Gamescom. Recently released drone video shows the new campus of Apple Inc., located in Cupertino, California. In a brochure mailed out to local residents in 2012, Apple says the new 176-acre campus would include wooded walking areas, restaurants, and a 100,000 square foot fitness center. On the company's website, Apple says it expects to move in around 12,000 of its employees when the project is complete in early 2017. The campus will become the company's new headquarters and is located about one mile east of its current headquarters in Cupertino. The website also says the facility will run on 100% renewable energy. Apple bought most of the land for the campus from Hewlett Packard, where late Apple co-founder Steve Jobs got one of his first summer jobs after calling HP founder Bill Hewlett to ask for spare parts. Jobs personally showed the architectural plans for the new campus to the Cupertino City Council in 2011, despite being ill at the time. The main building spans 2.8 million square feet and is more than four stories high. There is also an underground 1,000-seat auditorium.